guys, it's Bradley Doodling here for the NewFury.com, North State Theater in St. Pete, Florida, where it's actually a nice night when you're not getting attacked by bugs every five seconds like I am now. Um, but we're actually here with a new friend of mine. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, what band you're playing, and what instrument you play? Sure. Uh, with Head PE, uh, my name is Jackson. I play guitar. All right. Uh, first question for you. Uh, I actually want to talk to you a little bit more about, uh, and I know I Set to Kill was supposed to be on this date and then some other dates, but unfortunately they had to drop. Um, for people who aren't in the know about it, can you explain a little bit more about what was going on there and why exactly it Well, uh, you know, unfortunately I don't know too much, but we did hear she had an issue with her eye, they, they found a growth or something like that, and uh, it was really important that she It was a big enough of an issue to, you know, to, to stop them from coming out of the road. So. But obviously, when it comes to health, you know, you got to take care of yourself. You know, so they got to do that. And, you know, she's got to, she's got to get better. You know, so hopefully we can get back on the road with them sometime in the future. You know, but we definitely, you know, we're definitely pulling for her. So, uh, yeah. So with them missing a few dates and then probably more in the future, it's kind of, it's kind of undecided right now. They may join. But what does that do to your set list? Uh, does, that, does that like throw a wrench in things for you? How do you work with stuff like that? Well, you know, it doesn't it doesn't really seem to affect the set list too much. I mean, we kind of, we kind, I mean, we have a sort of tentative set list. You know, usually we start off with like the first, you know, three or four songs are solid. We know we're gonna do those. After a while, it's really based on kind of what Jared's feeling. You know, how he's feeling in terms of what's going on with the audience. And Songs. Maybe we want to switch to a slow song, so we'll pick that one, call that up, and do it. We're kind of just ready to go, you know. So it really just, and that's really the way it, it is, regardless of what bands are playing with us, really. So um, you know, it does, it it, de it definitely is a bummer, though. And we're, we're we were looking forward to them coming out, but in terms of the set list, we we keep it pretty consistent in terms of that sort of approach. All right. Um, you know, I, I found that a lot of musicians have all of the different stage diving emotion, especially stage diving, right. considering the, the, you know, what happened with Randy Life over in Czechoslovakia and the trial and stuff like that, and it's just all crazy stuff. Um, how do you personally feel about like, stage diving in your shows? Well, you know, it, you, you can't always stop it, you know, I mean, the, the, uh, what I understand that the, um, the size of the show that he was playing there was pretty big. Um, a lot of the shows that we play are not quite on that level. So, you know, we'll play the smaller clubs, and uh, a lot of times they are intimate, and the crowds are rowdy, and, you know, a lot of times security can't, uh, you know, it'll have a barrier or anything like that a lot of times, and the kids are right there. So, a lot of times it's really easy for kids to just jump up on stage and do their thing, and it's, a, it's it gets chaotic at times, you know. We just, you know, if, if you're going to jump up on stage and stage dive, you know, I guess if you're going to get up there and parade around for really... <laughs> a really long time after a while someone's gonna scoop you up and throw you back so you might as well just get up there do your thing and jump back out and be safe hopefully somebody catches you we just really want kids to be safe but at the same time have a good time and you know get a sense that they actually are able to sort of cut loose and you know sort of vent you know, and sort of express themselves so a lot of times you get to places where security guards are they're just a little too overbearing you know you get to some clubs and they say no mosh Oh Mosh, do you know who we are? Like that's that's almost like it's almost like a requirement, you know, for our shows. So that that kind of bugs, you know, sometimes. But it's, you know, it just it just really depends. But really, first and foremost, it's about you know safety and uh, you know, just you know, kids having a good time. As long as those two things are kind of happening, we're, we're happy. Yeah, I know you guys have a new album, Evolution, dropping. I always get notifications from uh, my friends and they're probably Sean. Love her. But hi, Shauna, if you're watching. No, she really. rules. She rocks, man. Um, so, with that album being dropped on the 22nd, uh, have you guys started playing any of the new songs on tour? Yeah, we actually, um, we have been playing them, actually, for the past couple tours, just kind of trying out different songs here and there. Some of those we won't be playing now, or at least yet, um, but we are playing three songs uh, during our set now, and, uh, man, it's, it's just such a good uh, some people, you can tell they, they recognize it. Some of them are just like, "What the hell is this? What did, what is going on here?" And you can kind of see the expression on their face. So yeah, we are, um, but we are looking at incorporating more songs 
uh, as the tour progresses as well. So, so you know, with bugs. the new, uh, they're awful. Lots of bugs. <laughs> they're awful everywhere. Whether in a light or you're like somewhere else, mm -hmm. it's just awful. I'm gonna have to like bathe in aloe vera when I get home because I'm getting torn up. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, with, with the new record and with all the other records, I think it was like six, seven. Evolution is your eighth album, right? Uh, it's it's the ninth release. Ninth. Yeah, there's you know some of them kind of get. We did one a record um, uh, only in America, and that was released released on Koch. A lot of times people tend to focus on the suburban noise records and the giant records, so that one may actually get missed. But uh, yeah, this is the ninth release. Okay. So with all those releases preceding that, uh, how do you come up with that kind of set list? Not just based on crowd feeling, but it, is it like do you have stuff that you have to play or that you like really want to play or how do you balance all that stuff out well you know as as you continue to play songs you know throughout you know the tours you start to see the the, the ones that need to stay in the set you know based on the action we had a few of those songs like sophia and, and a few others that have been in the set for a very long time um, almost 10 years and um th that's that's really that that's really how we develop them those do those come partially from uh you know, feedback from the audience, but they start from what do we want to show people? What do we really want to showcase throughout the set? We want people to see all of what we have to offer, basically. And so, based on that, what songs would fit that criteria? Have we done too much of this one style? Have we done too much of that style? So we really try to keep the balance, you know, you know between the fast songs, the slow songs, and just really try to keep the sort of like even flow throughout the, you know, the set, really. So, um, so yeah, they do start probably from from you know our wanting to play the songs it's because we feel something in those songs. We feel they have a lot to offer uh, for the live show, but they do end up developing into a sort of well, this song would work here in terms of placement, you know. So that's really kind of how it how it works out, you know. And a lot of it has to do with what Jared's feeling, you know, because lyrically he's he's got to be feeling the flow himself, you know what I mean. And we can just play whatever. And do whatever you know is going on, but he's 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 right there with the audience, and he commands the attention. And he's really got to feel that flow himself for it to really have the uh, the right uh, the right order, and for every song to have its proper place, really. So that's really that's that's kind of the basic foundation behind that too. Uh, you know, with with the new record dropping so soon, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it and why it's an evolution of sorts for the band? Well, first and foremost, it you know um, this is the longest we've gone. And uh, between this record and the last one, we had parted ways with Server Bones Records. And, um, you know, we really ended up doing a lot of stuff kind of on our own, um, touring-wise. We knew we wanted to put out another record. We had material that we had in the works, but we weren't really 100% sure that we wanted to go in the, the same sort of directions that we did in the past. So we had a discussion about where we wanted to go, and we kind of were interested in doing something that was not so much a throwback, but more of a to a lot of the pre-metal bands like Old School Black Sabbath and stuff like that, which is a lot similar to a lot of the doom metal stuff you hear now is basically comes from that. You know, it's just kind of a more current version of it. And we were interested in trying some of that kind of stuff. You know? uh, again, I was really into the, the Old School Black Sabbath. We were into the Old School uh, Zeppelin and, and, you know, bands like some of the newer bands like Sword. Uh, you know, the, you know they, they, they do some of that kind of stuff, you know, and uh, Mastodon. And there's sort of these types of bands that really do sort of have that classic sound that has been around since the dawn of metal. And so we figured, you know what, instead of just doing what, what, what the people that influence us do, why don't we try to go to the people that influence them, you know what I mean? So we tried to even go further back and that's really kind of led to this kind of newer sound for us. We've never really done that in the past in terms of trying to do metal with the, the classic old school Black Sabbath stuff. So I think that really is one of the main reasons this album stands out is because we do tackle those sort of those genres like we haven't done before. But we also have some familiar stuff like some reggae tracks toward the end sort of round out the album or section off that one. It kind of leaves the album with like a higher feel. So that's one of the main reasons we do feel this one is, uh, is a lot different. Yeah, something that's been going around lately, I, I know bands have been doing it for a little while, but you'll see bands that have like their 10th anniversary or 20th anniversary of this, that, or the other album, 
like a couple of nights as you were watching Trap and they were doing, you know, they were playing their uh, self title album front to back. Sure. I, I know that whole, or, I mean, uh, albums like that hold a special place in right. its hearts because it's like a snapshot of who you were and right. everything right. you were going through. Right. Um, what, is that something you as a band would uh, ever consider doing maybe for a tour? You know what? The first time we ever even thought about doing anything like that, honestly, was <laughs> about this record. And not to say that we think it's good, you know, it's going to instantly be a classic or anything like that, but we just, it's one of those records that we honestly feel like we could really just play this album from beginning to end and it, we would be so okay with that and we would we would have a great time but in terms of past albums it's an interesting idea for sure um, but it's not really something we've really talked about too much that's not to say it wouldn't be a good idea but, um, but yeah um, but you never know what you know, never know what the future holds you know maybe in, maybe sometime in the future we could do that you know so you know, with that said, uh, if you could personally see any, uh, say, like two or three bands play an album front to that past or present, mm-hmm. they be why? I'd, I'd love, well, Alice in Chains is one of my favorite bands, and uh, I, I would really love for them to play Dirt all the way through. That would be amazing. I don't know how happy a lot of the fans would be considering Lane's passing and everything, but my God, I, I saw them live, uh, you know, with uh, Duvall, uh, Linda Singer. Just so, he's so amazing, and they, they opened with uh, them bones, and that immediately convinced me that you know what these guys are moving on. But they didn't just they didn't do it you know part of the movie. They really uh, they really found a good guy for this spot. You know? So I'm still a big fan of theirs. I'd love to see them play Dirt. Um, I mean Rush is another band. I mean they they've done that though. But man, if I could just see them go through like uh, if I could see them go through 21, 12 live. That would be just absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm trying to think of another band. Black Sabbath, that would be a great one. Go through Paranoid. Uh, really, any of their first few records, I would love to hear them go through. That would just be absolutely amazing. Uh, Megadeth, I know they did that. They did that with uh, Rust in Peace, I think. And uh, didn't get to see that concert, but that would be one hell of a concert to see for sure. So growing up, who are, you know, you mentioned a few of them already, but who are some other bands or musicians that you really like clung to when you were growing up? So. Well, I first actually started getting into hip hop. That was like the first real genre I, I started really getting into as like, you know, as, as a youngster, really using music as, a, as an expression. But I, I started getting into bands like Megadeth. I started getting into bands like Kiss. I was really into Kiss for a long time, man. I was obsessed with that band. I did the whole go to the concerts, dressed up like Ace Frehley, oh, wow. tried to learn all his riffs and everything, you know, and I was really trying to teach myself how to play guitar, and at that time, that was one of the perfect, you know, that was one of the best bands to uh, to try to do that, you know, Ace Frehley's licks are, you know, uh, they're, they're classic, they're classic riffs, you know, they're not super technical, but at the time, it was perfect for me, because I was learning basic pentatonics and stuff like that, so I really got into them, and I really liked what they were doing musically, and just the theatrics and everything. Ozzy Osbourne was another big influence on me. Randy Rhodes was, I mean, the, the, the first two studio records and the tribute record to Randy was, I mean, those those albums just had a huge influence on me. And Randy's just still to this day, he's, he's God in terms of guitar for me. And uh, another band that really, uh, really changed things for me was Molly Crew. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I heard Too Fast for Love and that song, Take Me to the Top, I was like, what? hell is this this is and again i was at that point where i was still learning and, and you know learning guitar and stuff and it was like bands like this that really uh really resonated with me because the guitar was such a prominent part of it you know nick mars is playing it's just absolutely amazing he's one of the most underrated guitar players out there and um yeah so those are some of the bands that, that i can think of right off the top of my head that really had a profound uh, impact on my my, my style i guess yeah, you mentioned Motley Crue. I'm a huge Motley Crue fan. I've, oh yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I'm almost 25, so oh, right. my parents, you know, my parents kind of raised me on stuff like oh, that. Oh, cool, man. And it's cool. uh, good to hear. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I kind of want to go see them on that farewell tour they're doing. Right. Um, I, I've heard their first few shows I haven't gotten very good reviews, mm-hmm. but it is what it is, I guess. So, right, right. Are you planning on going to see them on their farewell tour? Maybe? Man, you know, I, I, I'd love to. It's just we're going to be so busy doing this that I, I, I don't know that I'd be able to make it out. 
but interestingly enough, um, I went to go see them uh, on their uh, their Generation Swine tour, which was Vince's return to the band. Wow. And uh, lo and behold, the band that opened up for him was Head P.E. What? And uh, this is back in 97. I'd seen them over at the New Orange Pavilion in Southern California, San Bernardino, which is uh, near where I grew up um, in Orange County. And me and a couple friends went there and, and saw the show. And we walked in as Head P.E. was playing. I knew really nothing of the band. I think I'd... I'd I'd heard the name before, but my gosh, they just, <laughs> they were insane. I mean, not to mention Motley Crue, that was just one hell of a concert too, you know. Um, but yeah, they were on tour together, and um, and I still talk about it with, with the guys today, how, how weird that was, that I went to that concert, and just, you know, almost, uh, you know, almost 10 years later, ended up getting in the band. <laughs> so that was a trip. But yeah, that, that, I mean, I was definitely into the Motley Crue stuff, and um, I'm really fortunate enough to, to see them live after this hopefully it's one of those hopefully it's one of those things where they say it's going to be the last one and then it's not because it happens a lot too but who knows you know, it's, really, it's really tough to say but definitely a, a great concert when I'm ever going to get you know it's interesting because after Vince left the band and John Karabi joined I, I liked that dude as well as I Okay, so, thank you. You know, I'm glad he said that yeah. because here's the thing with that record. He, you know, he got so, they got so much shit for that record. Album sales, whatever. You know, the thing is, they didn't just get a new singer and then play the same style. Right. They changed their whole musical style. It was heavier. It was raunchier. It was rugged. It was like completely different, and it fit that guy's vocals a lot more. That Motley Motley record to me, I I love that record. I'm a Vince fan. You know what I mean? Yeah. That record is amazing, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't think Karabi gets 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 enough credit for for being on that record, man. I think he should be proud of that work. I think I think the Molly guys should be proud of that album. And especially, uh, especially the track "Hooligans Holiday" because that's Dude. one of the first Motley Crue songs I ever heard, and that's just oh. like, wow, this is awesome. I mean, the Tommy Lee's drumming on that record. Are you kidding me? They had, uh, good. Um, they had, uh, I think Bob Rock. Did Bob Rock produce that one? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, he produced one or two of them in the 90s. I okay. Uh, okay, I'm, so I could be wrong about that right here. But anyway, the production of that album is absolutely amazing. And that opening riff, Power to the Music, I mean, say what you want about the lyrics, man. That 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 opening riff is just, I mean, that just, that, that convinced me right away. You know what I mean? And Mick, just him being able to, like, do this style, do that style, do that. I mean, he's a blues player. He comes from Jeff Beck, you yeah. know, and... Uh, and, and 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 those types of guitar players. So you know, uh, him, him to take it to that level was just to me. That was just my. I'm glad. I finally. <laughs> it's very rare that you meet somebody that actually is like, yeah, I like that record. You know. But, I I really do. I mean, I don't know why people are so bothered with it. Maybe because it was just a change in their style. But like. I think that's it. I think it's yeah. just a change in style. And you know, the record company was like, oh, this is different, whatever. But to me, the music stands on its own. I mean, so many people talk bad about him. I'm like, John Karabi was a good vocalist. They changed their style. It may not have shown up in record sales, but that's okay because it still kept them look for a while until Vince came back. Dude, I, I still listen to that record, and I still listen to the other records. You know, I love them. They're all great records. You know, so. So, what do you think is so iconic? Well, they were they were you know they were the bad boys. I mean, they came around that, that classic L.A. Uh, scene, you know, in Hollywood. When you know you know the, the hair was there, and, and, and you know you had bands like Van Halen out, and there were these blistering guitar solos that you hear, and the, the guitars were louder, the music was heavier, theatrics were becoming a lot more a part of the show, and I think they did fit into that uh, that time and that style well, but they were dangerous. At the same time, so they intimidated a lot of those bands that were in that uh, in that scene too. So I think they really found a way to just to to, to just to, to be to scream a little bit louder than a lot of the other bands that came out of that uh, out of that scene. You know, um, they had a they had they, you could call them a hair band, but there was a real punk element to them as well. That's true. You know, they, it was kind of like Guns N' Roses when they first came out too. You know. They were doing what was kind of going on there, but it was a little bit heavier and it was a lot more dangerous. So I think that really, um, I think that attracted a lot of people to, to Motley Crue, really. And you know, 
again, the theatrics, they shot at the devil. I mean, you see that album cover, what the hell they look, they look like they're just I like, know. yeah, they just, I mean, you don't see anybody. I mean, to me, it was like, and, the, and it was, it goes back to like the Kiss thing, you know, the theatrics. They really found a way to add theatrics in their own way. The video for Live Wire, you see Nikki Six is lighting himself on fire. Mick Mars is spitting blood, you know, like like Gene Simmons was known to do. Like all that stuff to me was like, okay, these guys are good in my book. I am, <laughs> you know, and um, and yeah, I think that's 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 a big reason why they um, why people love them so much. And obviously they, you know, they they write great songs. You know, uh, there's really nothing bad I could say about that band, really. You know, but uh, yeah, and they they enjoyed a lot of success for it too. So. It's, it's, it's great to see. It's great that they got that success because you know, I was able to to be exposed to them. You know, so. Alright, well uh, before we wrap this up, uh, do you have anything you'd like to uh, plug or tell anybody about or say hi to your friends or family? Oh yeah, we just want to say thank you to the fans. Um, you know, again, you know, it's this is the longest head PE has gone without putting out a record and so we're very uh, thankful and grateful that we have fans that are willing to wait as long as they have for this record. Um, and uh, you know, we we weren't going to put this record out unless we knew we could do it right. You know, so we did, thankfully. And, uh, you know, July 22nd, or I should just say the 22nd, uh, we we think fans are really going to realize it was worth the wait. For sure. So, so yeah, check it out, Revolution. Alright, well thank you very much for doing this interview with us today. It's definitely a lot of fun. I'm probably going to listen to Motley Crue when we get home. Oh dude, me too. Yes. I'm getting it queued up. I'm getting it queued up on my, <laughs> on my iTunes right now after this. But uh, it's been Bradley Dillon before you knew for you.com. Be sure to check out Head P's newest record, Evolution, on the Heathen Entertainment. And uh, if you're watching this, hi Shauna, you're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sweet.